Hello, it's VE3HDB in Scarborough. Just making a quick video, which I'm going to call taking the uh, open spot, the Shark RF open spot, on the road. And here's how I did it. I basically got a hold of a couple of items and uh, put them together and was able to, to uh, connect up to my uh, Samsung Note 4 phone and uh, take my uh, open spot wherever I wanted to. So I'll show you the components that I'm using for this and uh, a couple of hints to help you if you want to do the same thing. Okay, first of all, one of the things you're going to need is a battery. This is a TP-Link uh, battery, 10,400 milliamp hours. That's uh, pretty hefty. Picked that up at uh, Best Buy when it was on sale. So that's the thing that powers everything. And the nice thing about it is it has two USB slots. One is a uh, 2 amp and one is a 1 amp. Uh, either one is more than powerful enough to power the uh, open spot. Um, here's how it works. One of the things you need to do uh, is get yourself a uh, some kind of a mobile router. Uh, this is a TP-Link um, uh, 3G router, meaning that I can plug a uh, dongle into it with a SIM chip in it and get on the air um, immediately doing that. But that's, uh, that's a problem being as I don't want to spend any more money on SIM chips than I have to. Here's the uh, Win, Win Mobile uh, stick I have. And there's a spot in the back that you can put a SIM chip in, if necessary. And um, that's that. That's a good solution. That would just simply uh, plug into the open spot. I'm sorry, into the TP router in the USB port here. And then when you power it up, it would uh, connect to your uh, mobile um, data plan and become a hotspot. Okay, that's fine, except for one thing. As I was saying earlier, I've got a phone, um, which I'm using to make this video, so I can't show you. But uh, it, uh, I want to be able to still use the phone as a phone. So it does have a built-in hotspot. Uh, it would be nice if the Shark RF uh, had built-in Wi-Fi, and I understand that is something that uh, in the future uh, versions of the open spot they will have high Wi-Fi. But if you're like me and you couldn't wait to get one, and and you have one, uh, basically the only way to connect it up to the um, to the uh, internet is with the uh, RJ11 uh, socket. There, um, I took the cover off here because I've been I've been putting uh, all the betas on there. I like to be on the leading edge, so to speak. And um, it got to the point where uh, I have to uh, I have to, I have to see exactly where I'm pushing the little uh, screwdriver to uh, put it into um, uh, firmware load version. Anyways, so and incidentally, I've seen some things on the forum about the. Uh, the little plastic sheath falling off the uh, little antenna. Basically, this antenna is just a wire wound, like a spring. And sometimes, in my case, the plastic uh, uh, the plastic uh, cover fell off. That was a very simple fix. I just put a little bit of um, uh, heat shrink on it. Fixed. All I need now is to find a little cap that I can glue on there, and it'll be uh, back to normal. Uh, the other thing is you can also put your own antenna on, um, especially if you have a, a little 90 degree thing. Okay, so here's how we hook it up. Now, first thing you got to do if you have the uh, one that I have, which is the TP-Link um, MR3020. There's also an 802 version, which is a 4G router. Um, and I can't remember if it's got this little switch or not. This one has a little switch on here. If you're using it with the um, the uh, uh, SIM dongle that you're going to plug into the 
USB port, then you put it into the um, 3G, 4G position, which is the top position. I don't know if you can see that very well. No. Okay, so the cameras on these Samsungs aren't very good, unfortunately. So, but with this one, it, the way I'm going to do it, I put it in the middle position, which in my um, uh, wireless router is, uh, my wireless MR3020 is called WISP. Um, I have no idea what that stands for. And anyways, when you put it into that position, uh, you can then go into the... Uh, firmware on it and uh, select any or any uh, Wi-Fi uh, hotspot or router so I can connect up to this and then connect this up to my home router which is which is handy because I'm a little bit distant from my uh, um, home router and the signal strength in here in my ham shack isn't very good so I can put this somewhere halfway between the uh, the um, uh, router and um, and my uh, workstation but what it really comes in handy for is when I power it up um, I can go into the firmware and, and have it connect to my phone my hotspot so when I turn my hotspot on I can have it automatically connect to that and that's really handy okay so it doesn't have our it doesn't have Wi-Fi but it does have an RJ11 socket and so does our uh, open spot. So what we will do is just simply use a cable to connect the open spot. An RG11 cable, an Ethernet LAN cable to connect the open spot to the TP3020. Like so. Okay, so now the only other thing we have to do is power up the uh, uh, two devices. And uh, this TP uh, battery eliminator thingy is very handy. We can, we can power the uh, open spot and the TP link router with this battery. Okay, the TP link is going through its startup process takes a little while on this older model but it eventually gets the job done let's turn this around a bit okay so uh, I'm not at all oh, <laughs> I just thought of something I don't have my hotspot on As you can guess, I just turned on my open spot and uh, this connected to my phone. And we're now on the air. Well, if I were to transmit, we would be on the air. Okay, so. Just turned off the open spot. Oh, I'm sorry. What's happened is it's connected up to my router because that's where I've got it to look. So you basically have to go into the firmware on the uh, TP-Link and I'll show you that in a few minutes and select the uh, hotspot. Am I on hotspot still? No. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to recap briefly here. We have a power source. Oops. some feet on this thing. The hotspot itself is pretty, uh, well, um, it's got rubber feet. It's pretty anti-slip, but the battery is pretty heavy. If it goes off the end of the table, it takes everything with it. All right, so we got the RF connect, RF hotspot, RF, Shark RF hotspot connected up to the TP-Link 3G router, which is connected 
by Wi-Fi to my, in this case, home router, but it could just as easily be connected to my phone, and I'll show you in a minute how I configure the TP-Link to connect to my phone. Okay, so when you bring up your TP TP Link repeater or router, whatever you want to call it, you'll be in the status screen. What you want to do is go to wireless and hit survey. And you want to look for your phone. It's oh, not what I wanted to do. And there is my phone, so you could connect. And that will fill in the phone's unique ID. And then you type in the password, which in this case is password. You save. Okay, so you've put in the phone's name by using survey and the password. You've saved it. Okay, and normally once you've saved it, a little screen will appear down here saying click here to reboot. Or you can go to system tools and reboot. Okay, that's already been done and I am connected as you can see we have an address dynamic IP so we are connected so we can get rid of this now so we're out now connected to the uh, LAN and I look at my phone and see that the uh, TR uh, TRMR3020 is connected, so we have internet service coming via my phone. So that gives you the opportunity then to take it with you. You can basically hook it up to a battery, as I showed in the earlier video, and take it on the road. I hope this uh, is helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And please hit the like button. And if you like, you can subscribe. Have a great day, 73. This is VE3HTV. We're off and clear.